Good morning. It's Thursday, August 25th, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, When the Fire Falls, and our scripture is Jeremiah's Prophecy, chapter 11. Again the Lord spoke to me and said, I have discovered a conspiracy against me among the people of Judah and Jerusalem. They have returned to the sins of their ancestors. They have refused to listen to me and are worshiping other gods. Israel and Judah have both broken the covenant I made with their ancestors. Therefore, this is what the Lord says, I am going to bring calamity upon them and they will not escape. Though they beg for mercy, I will not listen to their cries. Then the people of Judah and Jerusalem will pray to their idols and burn incense before them. But the idols will not save them when disaster strikes. Look now, people of Judah, you have as many gods as you have towns. You have as many altars of shame, altars for burning incense to your god Baal, as there are streets in Jerusalem. Pray no more for these people, Jeremiah. Do not weep or pray for them, for I will not listen to them when they cry out to me in distress. What right do my beloved people have to come to my temple when they have done so many immoral things? Can their vows and sacrifices prevent their destruction? They actually rejoice in doing evil. I, the Lord, once called them a thriving olive tree, beautiful to see and full of good fruit. But now I have sent the fury of their enemies to burn them with fire, leaving them charred and broken. I, the Lord of heaven's armies, who planted this olive tree, have ordered it destroyed. For the people of Israel and Judah have done evil, arousing my anger by burning incense to Baal. Fire can be a good or bad thing depending on how it's used. In the kitchen, it's a wonderful presence helping to prepare a delicious meal. In a dry forest, it's a death knell for wildlife's habitat. The same is true in spiritual matters. God's Holy Spirit is sometimes represented as holy fire, such as the day of Pentecost when the Spirit energized the birth of Jesus' church. Fire is also a reminder of God's judgment. Jesus often taught of God's love, but the theme of judging those who say no to God's ways was always close at hand. When teaching his disciples about his love for them and how vital it was for them to stay close to him, enabling God's mission to bring his love to the world, Jesus then whispered the consequences of refusing the fire would fall. And unlike the good fire of God's presence on Pentecost, it would be the consuming fire of God's judgment. John chapter 15. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. The theme of judgment for sin is laced all the way through scripture from Cain's killing of his brother in Genesis through Revelation's great white throne judgment. In Jeremiah's prophecy, it's hard to miss how clearly God said that it was he who was responsible for the woes that would fall on his people because they had wantonly broken their covenant vows with God. God also claimed it was his right to do so because it was he who called and blessed them. He had planted the olive tree of Judah's Jerusalem, and it would be God causing the fire to fall. For you today, among most of the world's once Christian churches, there is today a deadly coldness when it comes to Pentecost's fire. They are like ovens without heat, only housing a possibility. But, as it was with the prophets, it's not too late for the remnant of God's people to return to faithfulness. Amos chapter 5. Hate evil and love what is good. Turn your courts into true halls of justice. Perhaps even yet the Lord God of heaven's armies will have mercy on the remnant of his people. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.